Hi everyone, welcome to Appliance Advisors. I'm Francesco, joined by Dennis. Today we're gonna to talk about a big important category here. We're gonna talk about refrigerators. And we're gonna use this as a guide to buying a refrigerator. What should we consider? What any pre-work or homework does the consumer have to do in their home to know what to look for? So let's just start off. What's the number one most important thing we gotta consider? Well, I mean, size is ultimately gonna dictate it all and yep. the space and what you can fit. Mm -hmm. But let's, again, we probably have options among. So things to start off, not in a showroom. Yeah. Please do not come <laughs> in and have discovery mm -hmm. with a significant other or some other family member or someone that's important living with you and figure out in front of us what's important to the, to the team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, please uh, have that have that needs assessment in your own mind and those things that you want to be considering. Ice and water. Yeah. Is it important? Absolutely. Is it important it's in the door? Do you yeah. just need ice and not water? Um, do you need it at all? Mm -hmm. That would be number one. Number two would be, how do you shop and how do you store food? And what do I mean by that? Like, are you somebody that's a big freezer person that does buy bulk and this is your only fridge mm -hmm. and freezer in the house and, and you need a freezer focus? Um, are you type A and really want to see everything organized and, 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 and kind of laid out? Yep. Um, do you tend to entertain and have wider things? I think of platters, yep. pizza boxes, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, cake, uh, I don't know, something, a cookie sheet, something that's wider, is that important to you? And then moreover, um, from there, moving along would be aesthetic. Are we doing a new, new construction where the world's our oyster and we can kind of develop the appliances exactly. around it? Or are we trying to mix and match as a replacement into an existing space? And if so, what do those start thinking about the handles? There's probably options. We'll talk about pocket handles and how it doesn't yep. have a handle. But, but thinking about that, and then um, finally, you know, if you have a budgetary number in mind or a brand that you're loyal to, those are questions that would normally come up in discovery with us. Absolutely. And then just also, if you are replacing and it's not something that's brand new, absolutely have the dimensions, not necessarily of your existing Thank refrigerator, you. yes, yes. The, the dimensions of the space the refrigerator is going yes. in, the width, the height, the depth. Very common for people to come in, stick a tape measure to the floor, to the top of the fridge, right. and then hook it onto the back of the fridge and pull forward. And we don't know if it's a really old fridge where there's a compressor coil that exactly. runs up the back. And so really it's sticking that tape measure through the top of the fridge to the rear wall, what yep. do we have for depth? Left to right, what do we have? Definitely. Inside cabinet to inside cabinet, and then floor, top to bottom, left to right, what do we have? If you give us that, then we can work back. Now, in a, an ideal, perfect way as well, it can't hurt. If you ever wanna know what you have for a model, and it's an older model, mm -hmm. historically, if you open any refrigerator, there is a, will be a decal and identifier. Yep. Historically, we're right-hand dominant. On the right-hand side, upper part of the fridge, there should be a decal with the model yep. number. If you give us that as well, we certainly know at least what's in there now, what will fit. And, and that might be a good point of reference too. All right, so next let's talk about kind of the most common question that we ask consumers too is, are you looking counter depth or full depth? And what, and what do we really mean by that? Yeah. Counter depth, standard counters uh, and, and cabinets in a kitchen are, tw cabinets are 24 inches, then you have an inch, inch and a half of overhang, depending on your, or a half inch to an inch of overhang yeah. uh, beyond that for the counters. But really that the body, the black sides, if we can think of that, or the, the textured sides of a refrigerator mm -hmm. will be counter depth, meaning it'll sit flush to the counters. And historically, there are even some exceptions here, but that the profile of the door will be what sticks yeah. out. Um, but really still gives a very clean aesthetic. Yeah. More like, more like the built-in brands that we all might aspire to or you know, if we had that money, could could afford brands like Sub Zero and yeah. Thermador, the big built-in style, really clean, customized fridge. It gives more of that look for two to three thousand dollars on a running average. Heck, you can get some for fifteen ninety nine. But kind of that's the range. And then moreover, versus full depth, which just means it's going to stick out much deeper than standard cabinets. About I say between four to six inches on a running mm -hmm. average. So, what are we considering there? We're considering. Um, do the, are we gonna see the sides of the fridge? If you have an island in a kitchen, that's gonna start to intrude yeah, on that sure. island if it's, if it's within that run. And then um, if we wanted to soften the look of the sides on a new home or even an existing, sometimes they've pulled out the cabinet sides yeah, make it to look accommodate and then it returns back to the rest yeah. of your standard counter. So kind of that's, a, that's something that you would wanna think about. Now sizing in general, like. How, what are the sizes that are out there? Is there a standard or yeah. a more common size? If you were building a kitchen today and we're just talking about 
traditional baseline. Mm -hmm. 36 inch yeah. by 72 inches yeah. would give you full, full options for a counter depth or a full depth. All we'd then be talking about is what is a kitchen layout and how does that work? Yeah. Um, that's for a standard fridge. We can go into built-ins and I think built-ins, uh, you know, 36 inches is still the industry standard to mm -hmm. start. They go much taller, closer to 84 inches yeah. and, and they keep going from there. Yeah. But 36 inches would be a 20 to 27, 28 cubic foot fridge, yeah. depending on whether it was counter depth or full depth. And really the average family of four growing up 20 years ago had an 18 cubic foot yeah. fridge. So I think you can work well with that 36 by 72, have a ton of options in price range, styles and brands, and just, just real macro, that's kind of a good starting point. Absolutely. Uh, to, to take off. And always good to kind of, we always tell people, you know, come in and look at the shelving. You know, what do you, like you said, do your home. What do you normally store in there? Do you do big items, things like that? Look how the shelving, those refrigerators work. Because again, hung up sometimes on cubic footage isn't the most important. It's really how is that cubic footage? Yeah, I mean, laid listen, out? we're Americans, bigger is better. Yeah. It's just just how we're wired, right? But if you really think about most people, when we ask them today, is and I had said it earlier in the episode, do you is this your singular yeah. fridge? More often than not, people might even be taking the fridge that's in there today on its last legs, but moving it to a garage, or they have a second freezer Correct. in the garage, or a fridge in the garage, or sometimes both. Yeah. The point is, if that were the case, countered up refrigeration is, and we'll just lead into it like. People ask us like, what do most people do? 80% of our customers would do a counter depth refrigerator. Yeah. And the reason why they do a counter depth refrigerator is that a counter depth refrigerator gives them that premium look, fit and feel we want. And we put islands in all the kitchens. Yeah. So clean linear design, yeah. less flow is great. Most of these counter depths, heck, there's some that are out there, counter depth max and LG almost 27 cubic foot. So we've found ways to do different moldings and injections and insulations in products. They've actually gotten bigger and uh, I think food tends to get buried in the back of these full depth refrigerators. Definitely. So I think if you think about how you use food, more people tend to tell us they buy more fresh than really frozen. The days of BJ's walking out with a big yeah. slab of meat and putting it in your fridge or whatever you freeze are kind of gone by the wayside and produce, fresh stuff more often is, seems to be how people shop. And uh, uh, I think that a counter depth really fits for most people. All right, awesome. So. If you're out there looking for a refrigerator or just interested in refrigerators in general, hope this episode helps you out and you enjoyed. And don't forget to follow us on social media for appliance tips and updates from Yale Appliance. Your feedback is what shapes our series. Like what you saw, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Stay informed and inspired on all your appliance needs. This is Appliance Advisors signing off.